this day. I'm um, someone who decided two years ago to go into full time in health artistry. Now, today I look back on my journey and I ask myself if I'm really an entrepreneur because I don't see any structure in what I do and I don't see results. I just see occasional jobs that I do and that's what I have. So, my question is a lot of times I'll throw back this question to someone who asked me this Do you know who you are? Because a lot of times entrepreneurs come up with a concept of, I'm an entrepreneur. But entrepreneurship doesn't work that way. You first need to identify your identity. So let's, let me put these four categories out to you. The first one is what we call a singular expert. So the singular expert is that person who takes your issue and resolves it, or takes your challenge and gives you results. It can be a dentist. It can be, let's say, an architect. It can be somebody who targets a doctor, medical doctor, accountant, for example. In those industries or those professions, they are actually called professional services. So professional services is that person who takes you and gives you a result. Now, there's a second type of person who calls themselves an entrepreneur. I always call them self-skilled. That person is that freelancer. They also think they're an entrepreneur. So that person is the photographer, the graphic designer, the makeup artist. They do freelance work. They are singular. Without them, their business does not exist. So how can they call themselves an entrepreneur? The third person is what I call the business owner. Simple characteristics, trading and having a team. So that person will usually trading. They would sell you this cup and then you give them money for it. Or they have a team, they coordinate the team to do things, but they themselves don't have a specific skill. That's a business owner. An entrepreneur is that person who has drive, wants their own control. You will see it in all their ca characteristics. The other thing is they are willing to suffer let me use the word, to even die for their business. So my question to you is, why are you not getting results? You're probably not willing to suffer and to die for your business. You are probably sitting out there thinking. Every time you hear a business expert talk about entrepreneurship, they ask one question. If you are truly an entrepreneur, the question I have to ask you is, can you do without your business for 90 days? Can you leave your business and go? You have a skill and it's still running. If you're doing makeup artistry, simply means that you cannot leave your business. Now, let me correct one thing. The definitions I've given, the singular expert who is in professional services, like I said, doctor or dentist, accountant. The second person I talked about was what I call this, uh, what I call self-skilled freelancer. The business cannot do without them. Then I talked about business owners. All of these people can actually be entrepreneurs as well. But what happens is that they run those businesses. So they actually are a singular expert, but they call themselves an entrepreneur. Meanwhile, they have the skill. It's vested in them. They have some assistants, or maybe they have a nurse or someone who's, they don't actually have any systems, any structures. They don't actually have people who they can duplicate their energy into. Now, let me take you back. When I talked about entrepreneur, I first talked about their attributes, or what I call their characteristics. They are hungry, they have drive, they like control, and they are willing to go through pain. But a true entrepreneur is this person. The person who has been their own accountant, meaning while they've kept their books by themselves. They use their own skill. They, are, they put their systems together. They write their own, uh, I'll call it their own uh, uh, accounting structure, IT structure, HR structure. They've done all of those and they can teach other people to do that. So what I'm saying is that a true entrepreneur is the person who has gone through the fire themselves, consolidated it so that when you see an entrepreneur's accountant, you will know, Do you know why? Because that person will be somebody who knows that that entrepreneur knows what they are doing. If you see an entrepreneur's HR manager, you can always tell because that person has knowledge. So an entrepreneur will have knowledge about accounting, about HR, 
about systems, about structures. I'm not saying they don't know how to do it, but trust me, they've tried it before and probably failed. That's why they hired somebody. So a true entrepreneur is that person who goes through all the entire motions, not just someone who's skilled, not just someone who has a profession, or not just someone who's running a business. So to be able to get results as an entrepreneur, you have to be an entrepreneur. If you cannot be an entrepreneur, don't expect the results of an entrepreneur. If you cannot put structure to yourself, how can you put structure to your business? You, people always say an entrepreneur sometimes is a crazy person, but I always say, talk to an entrepreneur and you will find what we call organized chaos. In the midst of their chaos, in the midst of their seemingly craziness and disorganization, there's something there that tells you they have some sort of discipline. They have some sort of goal. They have some sort of structure. So entrepreneurship is not that easy as people put it. Entrepreneurship is a grind. Entrepreneurship is pain. Entrepreneurship is crazy. So probably I think your current position is a freelancer. And when you're a freelancer, the way you work is as a freelancer, meaning that you see to your clients one after the other. And you have to know that if you don't serve them with what they need or you are not there, then you're not going to make money. You're not going to get your results. But know that you're a freelancer. If you know it, you would work as a freelancer. But if you're a freelancer who thinks you're an entrepreneur, you would actually fall by the wayside. So know your place. I always say that once you get this, and you get this understanding, you are clear. Secondly, know your stage. So your place first is this thing. Your stage is simple. As for the business cycle, there are only five. The first one is what we call the development stage. Someone who is now conceptualizing their business. The second one is what we call the startup stage. Someone who has started business. They may be struggling, they can't, but they simply cannot grow. So they are doing one thing. The third person is what we call the growth stage. Now they've made money. Now they've settled. Now they want to go to the next level. The third one is expansion. You see these people in different parts of a city or in different countries. And then the fifth one is what we call the maturity. They've reached their peak. They are doing well and they've settled. Those are the businesses that go for 30 years, leave a legacy, 40 years, etc. Know your place and know your stage. Then you really know who you are. What is missing with the question you asked me is, you probably don't know your place and you probably don't know your stage. Once you get those two, you're going to understand your structure and the results you give.